Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about a ton of beauty products. I think I have between like 35 and 40 products to review for you in today's video. So it'll be a little bit of a longer one. I'll try to keep this more like speed review style so we're not here all day. But I wanted to let you know what I think about these products, which ones I think are truly worth the money and the things that I would run out and repurchase and then which products I don't recommend, things that didn't work for me. I have a really good mix of makeup and skincare and hair care. I've been using these a lot over the last few months. I would say like summer heading into fall, but some of these products even longer than that. So I've been using them throughout different seasons in combination with other products. So I think at this point I have a really good feel for these products. I've used them up fully. Today's video is all about my empties and I'm going to go through and share my thoughts on them with you. So let's kick it off with, well, normally I do like makeup, skincare, and then hair care. Should I stick with that or should I mix it up? Let's just kick it off with this product and then we'll see how it goes. I was actually surprised how long it took me to use up the Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer because I was using this what felt like every single day since I purchased it. And some days I would even use it in place of foundation. But a little bit of this concealer goes such a long way. So you truly get your money's worth with this product. I did end up repurchasing it a few months ago because I thought I was going to end up going through it a lot faster than I did. And it really did last me a while. I will say I took out the stopper. If you haven't tried that and you have like a concealer or a lip gloss that you're almost finished with, take some pliers and pull out like the little plastic stopper because it will last you even longer once you can like go in and kind of scrape the sides. Anyway, this is my favorite concealer. It is so creamy, so gorgeous, really smooth looking on the skin. It has amazing coverage and honestly, I love the way this looks really over a lot of the other, not only concealers in my collection, but also foundations, because I will use it in place of foundation on more of a natural makeup day. I wear the shade N4, and it is a perfect shade match for me. So if this has been on your list, I highly recommend it. It is one of the best makeup launches of 2023 as a whole. Another product that I will probably forever repurchase is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. Did this come out in 2023 or was it the end of 2022? I can't remember. I feel like I've gone through enough of them that it had to have been the end of 2022, but I love this mascara. It makes my lashes look so good, really dramatic, really long. It gives a ton of volume, but it also separates and lifts the lashes so well. I have it on today. I did recently get the brown version, which I'm really enjoying too, but I will always have the black version on hand because it is my number one mascara. So I feel like I always have to have these products. Another product that I will probably forever repurchase is the NYX Thick It Stick It Brow Gel. I feel like I go through this not super quickly, but the one that I'm currently using is almost dried out too. And so I probably used this one up a few months ago, but I love this brow gel. It does such a great job of just adding volume and definition to my brows and also locking them into place. Really, these are like three of my daily makeup staples. You can't go wrong with them. So definitely some of my favorites that I love that I truly think are worth the money. And I've already repurchased all three of these products and I'm currently using them right now. So they will forever be on rotation. I did use up this sunscreen from the brand Hymish. It is the Artless Glow Base. Again, I did recently repurchase this product, so I do currently have it on hand. Although I've been switching it up a little bit more over the last month or two, this really was my staple go-to during the summertime because it is incredibly lightweight. Like it doesn't feel like you're applying anything to the skin and it gives your skin the most beautiful, smooth glow. So no matter what you put on top, whether it is a foundation or a concealer or you skip that and you just go in with other products, Everything applies so beautifully. Like this does not interact poorly with any product I wear on top of it. And it just feels good. My skin is so sensitive. And at this point, I do have other sunscreens I, I really enjoy as well. But this will forever be like my go-to sunscreen because it does double as like a sunscreen and a primer. It looks beautiful. It feels good. And obviously it protects your skin as well. Okay, let's talk about a few products that I do not plan on repurchasing. So the first one is from Good Molecules. I actually really like Good Molecules. They make amazing skincare products at really affordable prices. Whenever someone is asking me for affordable skincare recommendations, Good Molecules always comes up. And I think, you know, as a whole, it's easy to pair their products together and just kind of create like a full skincare routine from the brand. Anyway, I've been using this product for an entire year. It has lasted me a really long time, although there were times where I would put it away and use something else and then break it back out. I just feel like for me, it's not my ideal cleanser. It is the Acne Foaming Cleanser Salicylic Acid Acne Treatment. 
There are definitely times where I do love like a very lightweight cleanser, especially during the spring and the summertime in the morning. That's when I'll opt for something super light, like a gel cleanser or just something that isn't incredibly moisturizing. But the problem with this for me is that it's almost a little bit too light. It does come out like a foam and I feel like the second I apply it to my face, it almost disappears. Like once it makes contact with the water, the foam almost rinses away. Again, I will say this bottle of cleanser lasted me a really, really long time and it's pretty affordable. So I do think you get your money's worth, but you have to like a very lightweight cleanser, like almost a barely there type of formula when it comes to a cleanser. Like the second you put it on your skin, it basically melts away and it does have salicylic acid in it. So if you do have acne prone skin, you might enjoy this. But for me, I just like something a little more substantial. So instead of this product, I would personally recommend the Dermalogica Breakout Clearing Foaming Wash. This is also fairly affordable. Dermalogica is a little more expensive than good molecules, but I believe this is right around $20. And again, this will last you a long time. This actually comes with slightly more product than the Good Molecules one. This one also has salicylic acid in it. And the reason why I like this a little bit better is because it just feels more substantial. It's almost like a thicker gel. So once you add a little water, it can really work into a nice lather. You can apply it to your skin and you feel like you're actually really cleansing the skin and it's removing makeup and dirt and oil. And then afterwards, your skin is left feeling really refreshed without feeling overly moisturized. So this is one of my favorites during the spring and the summer. I do have more acne prone skin, although it's not quite as acne prone as it used to be, but I do think when I incorporate this into my routine, my skin just kind of stays clear more than it would if I was using a heavy cleanser. Actually, while we are on the topic of gel cleansers, let me touch on this one too. It is the Selfless by Hiram Centella and Green Tea Cleanser. I've actually gone through a couple of these over the years. Again, I am a fan of this formula because it is so lightweight, but I feel like my skin has changed a little bit. And now that it's more combo and not as extremely oily as it used to be, I don't know if this is quite as ideal for my skin type any longer. It is very light. It's lighter than the Dermalogica cleanser. It's definitely thinner, a little more runny. It doesn't work into quite as much of a lather. If you have extremely oily skin or even extremely sensitive skin and you just don't want a cleanser that is too moisturizing, too creamy, that leaves any sort of like feeling behind, this is going to be ideal for you because it is so lightweight and so gentle. Honestly, I, I can't imagine that it would really irritate your skin for the most part, unless there is like a certain ingredient in here that is really sensitizing to you personally. I don't plan on repurchasing this one right now, but I do think it is a really good cleanser if that's what you're looking for. I did use up the CoverGirl Lash Blast Clean Topia Mascara. So I liked this formula. I wouldn't say that I liked it better than a few of like my top favorite mascaras, which I have a couple of those in today's video as well. So for me, I while it was enjoyable to use and I think it was like a good everyday staple mascara, I don't plan on repurchasing it because there are other formulas that I like just a little bit better. Also, this was a little bit pricey for a drugstore mascara. I can't remember the exact price, but I want to say it was like $13 or $14 when I got it. Honestly, that's pretty expensive for a drugstore mascara. Drugstore prices as a whole have gone up across the board, and I do think that this performs well. Like, it feels like a very gentle mascara on the lashes, but it's not like the most long wearing. It's not necessarily the most lengthening. I think overall it did a good job of adding volume and making my lashes look dramatic. But if you have like extremely watery eyes or your mascara tends to smudge, I feel like this one would probably do that. I didn't have that experience personally, but because it was so incredibly easy to remove, like I could basically remove it with water and not in the way a tubing mascara removes with water. Like it would just like melt off my face with a little bit of water. I feel feel like it's probably not ideal if you are looking for like a smudge proof long lasting formula. So I liked it. I really did just not as much as other formulas like the Milani anti-gravity. This continues to be one of my top mascaras. It's so good. Like every time I go back to it after not using it for a little while, which doesn't happen a ton because usually I do have it on hand and I just immediately open a new one. But there are times where I'll take a break and go back to it. I just, I appreciate it all over again because it does everything. It makes my lashes look thick and long. You can really build this up or you can go in with a light layer for more of a natural look. But the reason why I love this is because it looks so dramatic on the lashes. Like you can really build it to look really intense.
I did use up the Ava NYC Main Magic 10 in 1 Shampoo and Conditioner. I actually went to repurchase these. I was pretty much out of like all of my shampoo and conditioner. So I went to Ulta. I was shopping for something else. And they actually didn't have like this specific formula in store. They had another formula from Ava NYC. I think it was like their volume shampoo and conditioner. So I did purchase those and I'm currently using them. I've only used them like once or twice. So I can't say for sure if I like them as much as these. Like initially they're fine, but I do really love this formula. I was kind of surprised by how much I liked it because when I tried the 10 in 1 what is it called? Like their leave-in conditioner. It's basically like a leave-in conditioner and a heat protectant all wrapped into one. I did like that, but I felt like over time it really started to weigh my hair down. Now they actually have a light version, which is more ideal if you have like fine or thin hair. And that's the one I do use and I think it works really well. But this formula did not weigh my hair down at all, which really surprised me because it does have argan oil. It also has like a lot of very moisturizing ingredients in it. And I think it did a great job of actually like moisturizing my hair, but not again, just making it look super flat or heavy or weighed down. It just cuts down on all of the frizziness, all of the, you know, like uneven texture, and it makes my hair look super, super smooth. So I am a fan of this formula. I do want to try it again at some point once I use up the other formulas I have because I also repurchased another formula from Hask that I'll be working through too. I kind of like to switch it up when it comes to shampoo and conditioner. So usually I have like two or three formulas open in my shower at the same time, which is why it does kind of take me a while to get through them. And then once I get through them, I feel like I finish like three, all three sets at the same time. I also used up the Garnier Color Shield Color Protecting Shampoo and Conditioner. Honestly, I didn't want to use it up. I didn't love it, which surprised me because I do love Garnier's hair products. I don't typically use shampoos and conditioners meant for people with color treated hair. I do dye my hair like every two or three months and then I'll just kind of use whatever shampoo and conditioner I want. And I thought maybe if I used one like specifically meant for color treated hair, that my hair color would last longer because it does typically fade pretty quickly. Like a lot of the hair colors I use have a lot of red to them and red hair or red hair dye as a whole just doesn't last as long. Anyway, I really didn't think that these extended my hair color at all. Like I felt like my hair color faded just as quickly as it does with other shampoos and conditioners. And then on top of that, like the actual formula wasn't anything super special. So for me, I was just kind of using these randomly in an effort to use them up fully. They weren't so bad that I just wanted to toss them. I always try to like fully use products up if I can, and I was able to get through them, but I don't plan on repurchasing them. I did use up this bronzer. I mean, there's a little bit left in here, but I am calling it quits on this one because the formula did dry out a little bit, and I felt like by the end, it wasn't performing quite the same. It is the Makeup Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. Look how much I used up. I'm honestly so shocked I was able to hit pan on this because it takes forever to get through cheek products in general for me personally, but especially cream cheek products. But I loved this bronzer so much. I wore it pretty much every single day. I already repurchased it and I am currently using it pretty regularly in my routine. I think they might be discontinuing this because on Target's website and then also on Ulta's website, they don't have all of the shades any longer. And I think they're slowly phasing it out, which is so sad if that's the case because this is an amazing bronzer. It feels like a high-end bronzer, but it's $8. I don't have another cream bronzer that is quite so creamy or blendable or easy to work with. It really is like a very, very effortless formula. So I love it. I think it is an amazing option. If you have any other cream bronzers you love, please let me know. I have a few in my collection that I like. Like I do like the Makeup by Mario bronzer, the LYS bronzer. Uh, there are a few other ones, but this really is like my number one favorite. I finished up the Glossier Boy Brow. I think this is the second one that I went through. I think I go through this a little bit faster than I go through the NYX Brow Gel. I want to say it has less product in it. How much does this have? Okay, 0.11 ounces, yeah, and then this one has 0.23 ounces, so this one is twice the size of the Glossier one, and the Glossier formula is different. Like, it's a very wet formula, so I do feel like it lasts a good amount of time for what it is, and I like it. I really do. I just feel like I'm definitely enjoying the NYX one more. There was a time, like, when I first tried this that I was preferring this formula to NYX, 
but now I'm definitely reaching for NYX over Glossier. So I don't know. It is a really good formula. I do enjoy it. I just don't plan on repurchasing it right now because I'm really happy with this one. I feel like it does such a good job. I used up a few moisturizers. This one is from e.l.f. Like I fully used this up. I squeezed out every little last drop. It is the e.l.f. Skin Holy Hydration Daily Moisturizer. So I picked this up because I thought this was something else, to be honest with you. I need to actually look on e.l.f.'s website because I absolutely love the Holy Hydration skincare line. I think that is one of the best skincare lines at the drugstore. And really just in general, the products have amazing ingredients. They are super, super hydrating and they just feel really good on the skin. So they have the Holy Hydration face cream, which comes in a jar and that's really good. I do really like that one. Oh, okay, no. So they have the Holy Hydration Hydrogel Moisturizer, which is one of my favorites. And I bought this because for some reason I thought that's what this was. I picked this up in store and it's not. So they have a third moisturizer called the Daily Hydration Moisturizer. I knew as soon as I tried this that it wasn't the hydro gel because it is a different texture, but I did really like it. It's very gentle on the skin. It's very smoothing. It's like the perfect daily moisturizer because it's not too light. It's not too heavy. It just kind of falls in between. So I would say if you have oily skin, go with the e.l.f. Hydro Gel Moisturizer. If you have combo skin, go with this one. And if you have dry skin, go with the Holy Hydration face cream. They have something for everyone in that skincare line. Like it is one of my top favorite skincare lines. Okay, another moisturizer I used up is the Dermalogica Stabilizing Repair Cream. I was actually really sad when I used this up because my skin was going through it at the time. I feel like it just, it has its ups and downs and there are certain time periods where my skin is so sensitive and just like red and irritated. And some moisturizers have like that very calming effect to the skin where if you incorporate them into your routine for like a day or two, it just kind of calms everything down and gets your skin back to like its baseline normal. And I felt like that's what this one did for me. I do deal with a little bit of eczema, especially on my neck, and my skin is just really sensitive. So when it's going through it, this is the type of formula I love. This is a very expensive moisturizer, so I did not run out and repurchase it. I should probably add it to my Black Friday list and see if I can get it on sale for a discounted price because it was really, really good. And I think as we head into the winter time, it would be so nice to have this in my just like skincare routine on days where I feel like I need a super nourishing, like ultra gentle, incredibly hydrating moisturizer because that's what this is. It's a little bit thick, so I feel like you have to really work it into the skin, but it left my skin feeling amazing every time I used it. I did use up the Vegamore Grow Dry Shampoo. I really like this product. I just repurchased it during the Sephora VIB sale. It's expensive. So I don't know that I will like always repurchase this dry shampoo because it does add up. And I like this one because it is so gentle. Like it did not irritate my scalp at all. It has a little bit of a fruity scent, which is nice. And it is talc free. So if that's important to you, that's something good to know. It does say that it has micro encapsulated phytoactives to help support thicker, fuller looking strands. And I've told you guys before, like, I don't know, I wouldn't say my hair is like fully thinning, but I do feel like as I get older, it's just not as thick as it used to be. So maybe it is thinning a little bit. There are different factors that could have contributed to that over the years. So I figured, you know, even if that is not like my main concern, it doesn't hurt to have a formula that claims to help with thinning hair because I do feel like my hair has gotten at least a little bit thinner over the years. So anyway, I do enjoy this. Like I said, it's expensive, but I've heard really good things about this line as a whole. Like I know they have a serum and I think they maybe have a shampoo and conditioner. So I might have to try some other products from the brand. It's just, it is a little bit more costly. So I used up the Ava NYC Freshen Up Invisible Dry Shampoo. I actually think this did a really good job too. I don't know that it is quite as intense as I was hoping that it would be. Like initially when I tried it, I was really loving it, but there are days where I'll kind of stretch my hair. And I think during the summer I was washing my hair like every other day without fail, sometimes every day. So I didn't need like a super intense dry shampoo, but like moving into the fall, I feel like I don't need to wash it quite as often. So I might do like every other day or every two days. And if I'm doing like third day hair, I do need a little more of an intense dry shampoo. And this formula and then the next formula 
aren't really ideal on days where I want something a little more heavy duty. So they're great if you don't have like an extremely oily scalp or you're not really stretching your hair too, too many days. So if you're going like every other day, I feel like both of these are fine. But that's why I'm trying out the one from Amika, which I am really enjoying. I think that one's a little more intense than this one. But I do enjoy this one. I think it's very lightweight. It doesn't leave as intense of a white cast as other formulas out there. The other one that I was just kind of waving around is the Hask Manoy Coconut dry shampoo. So I, again, I'm using another one from Hask. I feel like I always just have so many products on rotation, but Hask makes a charcoal dry shampoo, which is definitely stronger than this one. So if you want a lightweight dry shampoo, that's more ideal if you don't have like an extremely oily scalp, this is the one to try. This one also smells so good. It has a coconut scent which I just, I like, especially during the spring and the summer. But I think the charcoal shampoo or charcoal dry shampoo from Hask is a little more effective. So I've actually been using that one pretty regularly. I won't go back to this one right now. Maybe once spring rolls back, maybe once spring rolls back around. A few more makeup products. I did use up the Essence Prime Like a Boss eyeshadow base. It takes me forever to go through eyeshadow primer. And I actually went through this one kind of quickly because I was using it so much. It is very creamy, super lightweight. I feel like it does a great job of like smoothing out your eyelids, but it also locks my makeup into place well without like fully drying out the shadow. Like some eyeshadow primers feel almost dry. So when you apply shadow on top, it just transforms the texture in like a non-appealing way. This almost transforms the texture and makes them better. Like even if you're using a super dry powder matte shadow, it will automatically make it feel creamy. So I love this product so much. I think it does a really great job. If you're looking for like a sticky or tacky base, this won't work for you because it is incredibly silky, like very, very smoothing. But if you want your eyeshadows to go on in more of like a creamy way, this is great. I also finished the Catrice Prime and Fine Keep Me Matte Primer. I don't think they make this exact version of this any longer because I was trying to use it up fully so I could just be done with it. I have an updated version of this, which I do like. I can't remember off the top of my head if they're the exact same right now because I completely stopped using that one so I could use this one up fully because it was getting older. But this one did such a great job of smoothing out my skin and leaving my skin feeling matte throughout the day, so my, my makeup didn't look as oily. I do think the e.l.f. Liquid Poreless Putty Primer basically does the same thing as this in that it like smooths out your skin and leaves it matte throughout the day so your foundation wears really well, and that's really been my go-to. So this is no longer available. There is an updated version, but I can't remember if it's as good or not. So I know that's not very helpful, but I'll go back to using that one and keep you updated. I did use up a bottle of my Dramatica formula, which is basically customized skincare. So when I, I worked with them months ago, this video is not sponsored, but I do still use their products. And I told them like I, what my skincare goals were, what I was looking for. I really wanted to start tretinoin, but I wasn't sure how to incorporate it into my routine. And I do have a dermatologist, but it takes like months to get in there. And I had just gone at the beginning of the year, so I knew I wouldn't get in anytime soon. So anyway, I decided to ask the team at Dermatica to incorporate it into my routine. And they started me on like a very small percentage. And then I also have azelaic acid in my formula too. And then over the months, it's like slowly increased. So it's been great. I didn't experience a lot of the side effects I know other people have experienced by incorporating tretinoin into their routine because I started with such a small percentage and then slowly worked my way up. In fact, the one that I'm currently using is, it's higher than this, but it's still a pretty small percentage. So I love Dramatica. I think they do an amazing job. I'm all about like, customized skincare, customized hair care. So if you're looking for an option, I do recommend them. This video is not sponsored, but I might possibly still have like an active coupon code with them. So if that's the case, I'll link it in the description box below. It's not a, it's not an affiliate code, so I won't make a commission or anything like that. But if you do want to try it out, you can get a discount. So I did use up the Fenty Skin Thick and Smooth Rich Peptide Eye Cream. I've, I'm have i almost done with another Fenty skincare product and I really like Fenty skincare. I think their formulas are so beautiful. They're incredibly nourishing, super hydrating. They feel good, like they're pleasant to use, but the packaging is always 
there's always something wrong with the packaging. Like I used up the cleanser and I felt like it was so difficult to get the cleanser out of the bottle. And then the one that I'm currently using, there's another issue with that packaging. This eye cream is great. Like it's very nourishing, very thick, super hydrating. It just feels good on the skin. But every time I went to twist it up, like it would pop too much of the product out. When it comes to eye cream, I honestly just need like a very, very small amount. And there was no way to customize it because as you would twist it, it would literally just like pop out. It wouldn't slowly come out like other products that have similar packaging. So I just went through it faster than I would have if it came in like a jar type packaging. So for that reason alone, I don't plan on repurchasing it. I just can't justify like rushing through or running through skincare products that are so expensive. And again, I like the formula so much, but it just, I couldn't customize how much I was using. So I don't recommend it for that reason, but the actual formula was nice. It actually reminded me a lot of the It Cosmetics Confidence in an Eye Cream, which is my favorite. It's just very nourishing, super hydrating, very thick. And I'm not using this right now because I did purchase one from Osea and then I'm also using one from, I'm completely blanking. I have two eye creams. I actually have three because I have another one from Fenty. They have like that thicker eye cream and then they also have a gel eye cream which comes in better packaging. And then I'm using the one from Osea and then I'm using a third one. And I, I'm completely blanking on it, but I do love the It Cosmetics one. I think the Osea one I'm currently using is very, very similar. Like I don't see a big difference between the two. So I don't know. I always pick this up when it's on sale and it does go on sale fairly often. Like their entire confidence in a cream line is usually on sale multiple times at Ulta throughout the year. So that's when I grab this. I'll probably grab it then, but for now I'm good because I am working my way through a few others. I did use up the Amika Dream Routine Overnight Hydration Treatment. I love this product so much. I feel like I've talked about this a ton over the last few months because I cannot get enough of it but it is an amazing product. I won't spend too much time in today's video. It's basically an overnight treatment that you can use on dry hair or wet hair to really like intensely hydrate the hair. I usually use it after I wash my hair. I just used it today before I go in and blow dry it. And it just, it does a great job of making my hair feel super hydrated, incredibly smooth. And if you're someone who uses a lot of heat on your hair, I do feel like it I don't know if it like fully cancels out the effects of the heat, but it feels like that. Like it really does make my hair feel very smooth, very hydrated, and I, I love it. So I did end up repurchasing this product and it works really, really well for me. Another good hydrating product is the Whey Treatment Hair Mask. This is the one for fine to medium hair. They also have one, I think for like medium to thick hair. And I've tried a lot of hair masks and I do enjoy this one. I wouldn't say it's my top favorite. My top favorite is the Coco and Eve one. That one is so good. And then I also like the Briogeo one that comes in the green packaging. It's like the avocado and what? I swear I can't remember anything today. I can't think of it. It's the one that comes in the green packaging. That's my second favorite. And then I would say that this one is probably third. I like this one because it is lighter than the other two. So if I want to apply a hair mask and then actually like style my hair that day and wear it down without it looking weighed down, I will reach for this one. Whereas I can't really do that with the Coco and Eve one or the Briogeo one. It's not that they weigh my hair down, but they're so moisturizing that I feel like my hair almost looks a a little greasy even once I like dry my hair and style it. This one also just smells amazing. Whey products smell so so good. This one has like that oh my gosh what is it called? I feel like maybe I've been filming too long because I can't remember anything. It's one of my favorite scents. Melrose Place. The one that has like the rose and champagne. It's just, it's a really, really good smelling hair product, which I love too. So I don't plan on repurchasing this right now because I do have a couple of other hair masks that I've purchased randomly that I'm going to use instead. But at some point I would go back to this one. Another product that I don't plan on repurchasing that I'm just, I'm not a fan of any longer is the Drunk Elephant Sea Firma. For years, I swore by this product. I thought it was like the most effective product in my skincare routine. And when I first tried it out, I did like a, I don't know if I wore it or used it for like 30 days or 60 days, but I have like an entire video on my channel reviewing like a bunch of Drunk Elephant products when they were first starting to gain popularity. 
And I actually saw amazing results with this. Like it left my skin looking very smooth. It really worked to kind of fade sun damage, which was surprising to me because that wasn't really the case within... Like I've tried this on and off over the last few years and I just haven't had the same results. So I don't know if they changed the formula, if my skin is different or what, but I just don't like this. First of all, it has such a strong, intense scent. People have described it as like hot dog water over the years and that is disgusting, but that is what it smells like. Like it really does smell like that. And even throughout the day, like it doesn't go away. Second of all, this does oxidize fairly quickly. They've improved that a little bit because now you don't actually mix the product together until you're ready to use it, but I did still find that the bottle I had oxidized faster than I really thought it would and faster than other vitamin C serums I've tried. Third, I just don't find it to be as effective. Like I took a before photo and then I used it really consistently for like I don't even know, maybe two months, and my after just didn't look any different at all. So every day I was using it, hating how my skin smelled, not really loving like the sticky texture, and I didn't really even see any results. So I am cutting ties with the C Firma. I had a good run with it like back in 2017, but the, these days I don't really even use like a vitamin C regularly in my routine at this point. Okay, we are almost at the end. I feel like I had so, so many products to talk about in today's video. I just used this product up this morning. It is the Murad AHA BHA Exfoliating Cleanser. This is something I would only use on occasion, like maybe once a week. So it did take me quite a while to get through it, but I do like to have an exfoliating cleanser on hand. Like most of the time I'll use a very gentle gel cleanser or maybe like a cream cleanser, and then I'll work this into my routine occasionally. And I I think it just does a great job. I think there are benefits to having exfoliating properties in your cleansers, just not every single day. So I love this. Murad cleansers are pretty expensive, but you get so much product in here. 6.75 fluid ounces. And if you're only using it on occasion, like one bottle will really last forever. I don't think I'm going to repurchase this right now because as we head into the winter season, I will probably stick with like a very hydrating cleanser. And I do have the Dermalogica Microfoliant in my shower right now. So I wanna use that one up fully, but I do really like that product. This is a product that I did not like. I actually haven't even used this up fully. I've been like forcing myself to use it, but I really, I don't love it. It's the EOS Shea Butter Shave Cream. I think the texture of this like when you apply it to your skin, it feels like it's going to be ideal for shaving because it's almost like a thick lotion-like texture. So it feels like it will protect your skin really well. But I don't know, when I use this product, I just find that my skin is very irritated compared to when I'm using the Billy Whipped Shave Cream, which is my favorite. I wouldn't say the textures are that different, but I guess they are. Like the Billy one is whipped. It feels so good on the skin. It's just very like nourishing, very gentle. And I feel like when I use this one, I don't get like a very even shave. And then my skin, like I said, is just left feeling a little bit irritated because I don't think it's quite as protective as the Billy one. It's a little bit too thick and lotiony. It also clogs my razor instantly. So like every single time I have to rinse it out and it's not a quick rinse. I have to like really hold it a certain way. And I, it's just, it's such a high maintenance product. So I do not recommend trying this. Although I don't know, again, it has really good reviews online. So there is a chance you could like it, but if you prefer more of like a traditional shaving cream, the Billy one is great. And if you do like more of a lotion-like texture, you might enjoy this. I just haven't had a good experience with it personally. I did use up the Flower Beauty Dream Warrior Volumizing Mascara. I think I used this up a few months ago because I can't remember the last time I used it. I feel like it was probably in my empties bin last time I did an empties video and then I just forgot to include it in the video, but I love this. It's one of my favorite launches of 2023. It makes your lashes look so good. Really dramatic, really thick and voluminous. It can get a little bit, not clumpy in like the typical sense, but I feel like it's maybe not quite as separating as a few other formulas I've tried. So my lashes don't look, it doesn't look like I have quite as many lashes, but they still look very, very dramatic. 
But again, it's been a little while since I've tried this, so I kind of want to repurchase it and go back to it because I loved it when I was using it. Actually, I used this up as well, the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Pink Dream Body Cream. I've had this in my collection for a while. When I initially bought this, I used it so much that I had only like a tiny bit left. And then I think I was like burnt out on watermelon lotions because I had a few in my collection. And I went through this phase where like, I wanted everything watermelon scented, like watermelon lotions, watermelon candles, watermelon, whatever, like whatever I could get my hand on that smelled like watermelon, I wanted it. So anyway, I finally made my way through the rest of it and I do love this formula. I just, I wish it came in a different scent because I'm not really into watermelon right now. I wonder if they actually do have a different scent. Oh, you know what? They changed the packaging. So it no longer comes in a pump. Now it comes in a squeeze bottle, which makes so much more sense because I did feel like when I had this, sometimes the pump would get clogged or it wasn't as easy to work with. So by the end, I would just like take the pump off and just try to like dump the lotion out, which wasn't super easy. So now that they have it in different packaging, that is definitely more ideal, but I just wish it wasn't the watermelon scent. It does smell good. I just feel like I, I went through a phase where all I wanted was watermelon, and now like I don't want anything watermelon scented because I'm sick of it. Okay, the last product, is this it? Yeah, the last product to share in today's video is the Kenra Volume Spray, which is my favorite hairspray. I went through a phase where I wasn't really into this, and I think they changed the formula because it didn't feel the same. And then I think they switched it back because the last few times I purchased it, it felt like the original formula I loved. I think it does a really good job like locking your curls into place. At this point, I did my hair like hours ago. So a lot of the curls have kind of fallen out, which I almost prefer because sometimes when I initially curl my hair, it's just a little bit too tight. But I do feel like you know, this is usually what it falls to and then it will stay like this all day long with this hairspray. If I like hold my hair up and spray, it will give me a lot of volume too. And it's just, it's a great product. It's expensive for a hairspray, but it really does work well. And if you have hard to curl hair, like if your curls tend to fall out after just like an hour or two, I do recommend trying this out because I feel like it locks my hair into place better than other formulas I've tried. Okay, that's everything I wanted to talk about in today's video. I feel like this was a very long video. I'll try to cut it down in editing, but I really wanted to share my thoughts on all these products now that I've used them up fully. So I hope it was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will see you very soon with a new video. Bye.